This is Jordan Tower with JT News. Make sure you smash that like button, smash that subscribe, and let's get right into the news. So we got Lil Wayne. He canceled his performance due to unforeseeable circumstances for the Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. fight. And it was uh, it was a decent fight. I, I peeped some of it. It was just that the draw thing. I don't know. Mike Tyson seemed like he got it a little bit more. I mean, Mike Tyson was on his A game. But, uh, you know, it was good to see they entertained the people. Um, it's just, you know, it, it was, I, I just couldn't believe it was happening. I was like, wow, this is, <laughs> this is happening. These guys really got into better shape than ever and like and, and did this that that was that was pretty amazing uh nate robinson obviously he got he got knocked out okay jake paul is taking boxing really seriously like nate robinson's an nba player and jake and jake paul is a youtuber as you know but it's like pretty crazy rick ross reaction he's like come on nate yeah i'm not gonna play but he was like well i'll play a little bit of it <laughs> Somebody tricked you into getting that check, he says. I mean, that's funny. Uh, then we got Floyd Mayweather's daughter reacting, saying, y'all turned boxing to a straight joke. Since when his boxing matches turned into concerts? Kind of when you have the one guy come out and introduce the ra the rapper coming out to the ring. But it was like a straight concert tonight. I think they were just trying to like make a different kind of entertainment. I don't think this is really just a boxing match. It was like everything was going on during this. It was different. Um, what else did I have in this first segment here? Oh, yeah. Meg the Stallion gets dissed <laughs> by, what's her name? Chromas. Now, I guess Drake is connected to Chromas somehow, but she dropped a diss track named that Meg the Stallion named Marcus the Stallion. Basically, she's calling her a man, and she's saying that Tori's innocent. You're just trying to paint him as something else. You know, it's like, which is a serious, it's a serious legal situation. We don't know what happened, but the story isn't adding up. That's all I, I'll say about that. It's just not adding up. You know, it, it's it's spooky, okay? Uh, go listen to it if you want to listen to it. It's, it's, the girl looks hot, and but it's like, you can tell it's like one of her first rap songs, you know? Uh, so, Quando Rondo deletes his social media when everybody says he lied and he just canceled his show. I think it would have been smart for him to cancel his show. The King Von thing only happened a month ago. And yet, you're trying to go do shows. you got people in Chicago that want to get after you. It, was, it would have been the smartest thing to cancel this show. Seriously. But he's trying to be tough still. You know? It's like, come on, bro. It's like, your life. You know? Like... And speaking of guys, uh, okay, so this is the third interview where Saigon has mentioned my name. And I'm going to tell you why he's mentioning my name. It's safe to mention my name because he knows I'm not going like, to. I was the guy, I was with Mob Deep that night, okay? I wasn't just in there filming and I had, this is 13 years ago. I had forgot about this thing, okay? This is so old. It might have been 14 years ago. It was a long time ago. I was super young. I think I was like 23. It was so, I was so long ago. I was with Mob Deep. Havoc had his release party for something then. And I was in there. I was with Prodigy. I stayed in the crowd. And we could not believe Saigon was going to perform. After everything Saigon was doing, remember, I was doing, this is around the time I was doing come up DVDs with Fendi. And uh, this guy was there to perform. And I was like, is this guy crazy? Like, there could, a lot of my, a lot of friends of mine were on stage. They, they were around Mob Deep, you know, Tyson, uh, you know, th those were good friends of mine. Hot Rod was in the building, right? And how, you could ask Hot Rod, you could ask Tyson, you could ask anybody that was there. You can't make up what happened, okay? He tries to act like me. I was in, first of all, that was a Mob Deep production anyways, okay? But he wants to single me out because I'm the guy behind the camera and he thinks that's safe, okay? 
he doesn't want to talk about Tyson or on the people who chased him out of the club. He threw his jewelry to the ground, okay? Now, can Saigon rap? Yes, Saigon can rap. He's had every, every layup a rapper can have in the music industry. Best friends with Just Blaze. Best friends with a guy at the source when the source mattered, right? Uh, got, got the best write-ups. Uh, he, he got a deal with Atlantic. He had a song with Jay-Z. Nothing could work for this guy. Just people didn't like him, okay? Could he rap? Yes, a lot of people can rap. He just wasn't appealing. I, I liked a few songs of his. He was more of an underground rapper to me. Like, if he was going to make it anywhere, it would have been in the underground. I think that's why he signed to Tech 9 right now. Okay, Tech 9 is a super successful top tier underground artist, meaning he's making more money than most major artists. Okay, Tech 9 is a force to be reckoned with. I have ultimate respect for Tech 9. Uh, and, you know, Tech 9 kind of saved him recently. He signed him to his label and he's guiding him in his way and he's getting him the press he needs to move forward okay now then saigon that didn't work the atlantic situation the, after the the mob deep situation it was kind of over for him you know because he had been talking this tough that's the problem if saigon wasn't going around trying to act like the toughest guy in the world and starting problems with artists and trying to act like a tough guy he would have probably made it but it, it wasn't you can't be something you're not you know he was trying to act like he's core mega and he's not core mega Core Mega is a guy that really came from, like, I know because I'm very good friends with Core Mega, right? To this day, my whole rap career, my whole career in rap, I mean, I'm not a rapper, my whole career in entertainment, period, I've been pretty much, Core Mega's been one of my closest friends, okay? This is a guy that actually came from the street, actually will do everything he says and has done everything he says, okay? A lot of rappers want to be him. And he's on these podcasts, meaning Saigon, talking about he is not a rapper. He's just a street guy that knows how to rap. Sounds good. That's a great, that's a great little, you know, saying to have in the two, you know, early 2000s. Just be yourself. You're a nerdy guy from the street that likes to rap and you're good at rapping. Will he throw down? Yes. Yeah, he went to jail. A lot of people go to jail. Okay, but the, you know, is he is he soft? No. Okay, that night I I was like, wow, he's really getting up there with them. And you could, if you're really like aware of what's going around you, you were getting rocked to sleep by havoc. That's a tip. That's a that's a havoc move right there. He rocked you to sleep. He was twisted. He just grabbed you by the shoulder. He was talking to make you feel comfortable. I think his cousin was there that you're friends with. I don't know who what relation to havoc was. I don't know if his brother or his cousin. I don't know. But he was there, made you feel safe. You felt like it was safe. It wasn't safe, bro. If you looked around you, those guys were like ready. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. Ask M. Rec was there. M. Rec. <laughs> M. Rec was there. He was right next to me. We're, we went right back and uploaded it that night. Okay. And yes, so, so, so what happened was Saigon performed. I couldn't believe it. Then um, it ended. Tyson grabbed him up. What did Saigon do? So a scuffle kind of broke out because Havoc's brother, or cousin, whatever his name, whatever I forget his name, uh, he he stopped the situation. He protected Saigon. He was protecting him, right? So Saigon like dove under for before he dove under a table. Prodigy, right? Prodigy is sick. Prodigy has sickle cell. Okay, he's not. He wasn't Prodigy that came home from jail. Okay. This was Prodigy. He was kind of sick at the time. Uh, couldn't, you know, and he sucker punched Prodigy. Okay. That was crazy. Like, he sucker punched Prodigy. I get it. Do what you got to do. You know, he was he was kind of cornered, sucker punched Prodigy. Dove under the DJ table. Okay. You can't make this up. Watch the tape. Okay. Some other guy kind of pushed Prodigy too. And when he's talking about on that, that thing with Nori, I hate having to talk about this. This is 14 years ago. I can't believe this is still on his mind. Okay. But people try to change the narrative 14 years later. And that's what he's trying to do. So let's just get this straight. And you can watch it on, uh, on a million things. Go to Forbes DVD or whatever. So anyways, he dove under the DJ table. 
They were trying to get in front of the DJ table. Some of the guys chased this other guy that kind of knocked Prodigy off his feet, right? Then they came back and, you know, Havoc's brother was, or cousin, whatever he was, was trying to, like, stop, you know, him from getting beat up, right? And then Saigon got a piggyback ride from some big guy out of the club. And they were... They, oh, and don't forget, right before he dove under the DJ table, un, Square hit him in the face, punched him in the face, okay? Bang! So Saigon got clocked in the face. He got clocked. Listen, this could have been avoided if Saigon never got on stage. I'm not advocating this. This is just what happened that night. Saigon put himself in this position. He knew he had dis prodigy. This wasn't the place to piece it up, okay? Um, anyways, so he got a piggyback ride out of the club. They were hitting him on his head on the way out. He was running around looking for a cab. He actually threw his watch on the ground to distract them, which ended up being a, a fake watch. I don't know what it was, something fake. And uh, you can look at the footage. Hot Rod is like, wow, that is <laughs> the worst piece of jewelry I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and Saigon jumped in a cab and rode off. I captured the footage, but yet he wants to come after, he wants to keep talking about me in the thing. Nobody's scared of Saigon, okay? Oh, let me get that very clear, okay? Nobody, okay? Uh, but do I respect his rap style? Sure, sure I do, okay? Listen, I captured the footage that night, that's what happened. I can't make things up. I can't, it's not like it's a cartoon. I filmed it as it was, and I put on the screen what was happening, because back then, HD wasn't really out, so it wasn't crispy, okay? But that's what happened, and a lot of things were going on in the club that night, so the camera was a little shaky. I wanted to make sure I got it right, and I wasn't on Saigon's team. I'm a prodigy in them, okay? And that's what happened, you know? Guarantee you, if it, if it went another way, it, the footage would have never came out anyway. So, you know, like, it, it went this way because Saigon took a L, okay? He got out of the club, he got in, he got in a cab and rode off, Unpunched in your face Tyson grabbed you up But yet you want to come after the guy who filmed it You, you gotta be joking That's the most soft move Ever Okay to like oh yeah I'm gonna go after the guy that was uh, Behind the bar The guy behind the bar is responsible for it Three four other people were filming in there that night One guy actually tried to walk you through it And save you because you know They're friends with you do I not like Saigon? I don't I don't know him. A lot of people don't like Saigon in the industry. But a lot of rappers don't like him. If you notice, a lot of rappers don't mess with him. It's because he's, like, kind of weird, okay? Kind of weird, okay? He, like, he, he switches up on people. Like, look at what he was doing at the beginning of his career. He was going at Prodigy Joe Budden. You know, he'll say he was defending himself. He was kind of a troublemaker. He got a big head from getting a Jay-Z record. Friends would just blaze up. And, you know, he got a big head. It's okay, okay? Then even after all that happened, he got on Entourage, one of the biggest shows on HBO and couldn't make it from there, right? Fumbled that ball. Then got on Love and Hip Hop. Fumbled that ball, okay? And recently he signed a Tech 9 and I hope this works out for him. It doesn't look good from his streaming, but I'm sure he's making money some way, okay? And his streams are like below 5,000 on each song off of a project he released months ago, okay? People aren't checking for sight. He really just needs a hit record. If I were him, I would call just Blaze or somebody. Get a hit record, man. I have nothing, no problem with this guy. The only reason I'm talking about him right now is because this is the third time, third time he brought up my name in an interview. And he acts like he doesn't know my name, but he brings my name up. With Jordan Taylor, is that his name? Is that, yeah, yeah, yes. Yes, I reached higher level than you did in, in, in my past uh, career, okay? Yes, yes. My name's Jordan Tower, yeah. <laughs> yo, yo, is that his name? You know, it's like, st 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 stop playing 2005 rap games where you don't predict, you don't know the other guy's name. That is so, so old school, bro. This guy is in his mid 40s, okay? I'm approaching 40, okay? I would never talk like this, okay? He's in his mid-40s and he's still talking about stuff from 14 years ago. That's It wasn't even that serious. People, you don't want people, you don't want to keep bringing that up. If he had stopped bringing that up, people wouldn't, that's the only talking point he has. And that's sad, man. Yo, fuck.
focus on your music. You can rap. I can't rap. If I could rap, I would focus on my music. Anyways, it's Jordan Tower with JT News. And don't make a big thing of this. I'm just explaining to you guys because you keep typing in my comments about this. And I, I appreciate you alerting me to it. You know that Saigon said he wanted to slap me when he saw me. It's like, okay, sounds good, buddy. But, you know, we're never, you know, like a very rare occasion we would see each other. I haven't seen you in the past 14 years once. You've never been in the same spots I've been at. It's cool. And if you see me, nothing's going to happen anyways. <laughs> Let's be honest. It's just like it sounds good in an interview. But, like, why don't you go after the guy in the bar, too? Or why don't you go after the guy that was downstairs taking a, a leak in the bathroom? Because that's how weak it is. Talk about on, uh, talk about everybody else on stage that was trying to get you and throwing bottles at you, okay? You got rocked to sleep that night. And I was like, I wish I could have warned you before you got on stage. Like, yo, bro, just leave, my G. This is crazy. Like, I don't want to see that happen to somebody. But you walked right into it. It was crazy. Anyways, this is Jordan Tower with JT News. I'll check you guys later. Peace.